Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. And we're going to finish out the Resident Evil 2 board game here with the G Mutant. This is a big, gnarly sucker, and he is going to be pretty fun. I don't think he's going to be too difficult or straightforward. You might, you know, I, I did go a little bit extra with the blood vessels there on the eye, but, you know, we'll, we'll address that as, as we go. Uh, but without any further ado, why don't we just uh, get on to it? All right, well, the first thing that we would have done is we would have covered the entirety of the miniature in dragon red. That'll just get a nice base coat on there. Now, you might be asking, why should I bother putting a coat of dragon red on there if the miniature itself is already red? Uh, well, generally, you want to have at least one layer of paint on there before you start putting, you know, other layers on top of it. It just sort of helps to... Uh, you know, keep the paint from rubbing off very easily and all that. The other thing that I did too is I just touched up the base using some matte black, so I just went over that real quick. You can do that before like I did here, or you can do afterward, it doesn't really matter, it's just whatever you prefer. And I figured what we'll do is we'll kind of approach this the same way that we did the liquors, and that they'll he'll be nice and bloody and, and fleshy and gross looking. But uh, we're gonna do some different sort of like colorations because I feel like this side of his body is a little bit more humanoid, whereas this side is much more grotesque. So what we would do, or what, what I figured we should do, is we'll look at all of the different parts of the body that seem to be more humanoid, like this whole left side right here, and this arm, and, and all that, but then when we get to the actual head, and the weird sort of like tail that's that's growing off of the body, and this big arm right here, we'll use a, a slightly different color, or we'll, we'll use some different layers of colors. So, yeah, started with some dragon red, and I think that what we'll do is we'll start off doing the more humanoid looking stuff right there. So why don't we just take out some barbarian flesh? All right, and we're going to approach this the same way that we did the liquors earlier, so we'll use a uh, dry brush if you have access to it. Get your hands on a, on a dry brush right here. If you don't have an actual dry brush, you know, uh, you know, designed for painting miniatures, what you can do is you can just get sort of any, any sort of flat chisel like brush you can get something like this as you can see it's kind of thin on one side you know it's like a it's like a square rectangular shape I don't even know how to uh, properly describe it but uh, something like that that's the kind of thing that you're looking for if you if you don't have access to a dry brush but if you have a dry brush just use this bad boy and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush and you're just going to nudge it into your paint puddle just a little bit like so and you're gonna wipe off most of it, that's why they call it dry brushing, is because you have some paint on your brush, but it's such a little amount that it's almost dry. You can add a little bit, you know, more to the bristles as you go, you know, just you use your best judgment and you'll you'll be okay. But this kind of thing right here, and as you can see, that gets uh that gets some paint on there, but but it's nice and dry, like if I put that on my hand, you know, on my finger, like some shows up and not a whole lot. But that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. And yeah, like I said, why don't we just go over all of the humanoid bits? And yeah, just sort of lightly dry brush over everything until you get a uh, sort of coloration that you're happy with. And the cool thing about doing dry brushing too is that you can do layers of dry brushing and you can sort of blend things a little bit more naturally. So what I'll do is I'll go over, you know, sort of the, the bloated sides a little bit, but after I'm done with this and we start doing the bloated side with a little bit of a different color, uh, then it'll blend a little bit better, and that's that's gonna be pretty cool But Yeah, like so you just want to get uh, the, the way the dry brushing works is that all of the high contours of the miniature all of the sort of like flesh lines all of the different Things that pop out will start to become this different color that you're using your dry brush for But the base color will remain the same which in this case is that gnarly dragon red color So it's a nice bloody red kind of thing So yeah, nothing too major. I think that this is going to be another really easy miniature. I think that this one is going to not take up very much time at all. I've just been putting this video off, shame on me. But shouldn't be too big of a deal, so let's just get to it. This, uh, the top of this sort of hump right here is a really good example of how to uh, of, of looking at really 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 good dry brushing because all of those lines that separate all those muscle fibers those are nice and deep on there so you can just go across all of them like this now a big important thing is you don't go with those lines so you don't want to go uh you know uh, parallel to them like this you know you don't want to go across the side you want to go from top to bottom in this case because that's where all of the defining lines are at so this is a really really good uh, miniature to exemplify dry brushing and, and how good it can be.
What I'm going to do too is I feel like part of the leg is still supposed to be a little bit more humanoid. Like you can kind of see his kneecap sticking out a little bit just like that. So I'm going to go over that with this barbarian flesh color. Oops, knocked my camera a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, just a little something like that. And then we'll also try to get his feet there a little bit too, or his other his other foot. It's kind of underneath the big bloated part. Just like that, easy as that. Okay. All right, and then you can kind of go over using as many layers as you want. It'll really kind of thicken up that flesh color a little bit. You know, just whatever you are the most happy with. I will say that when you go over it with the varnish later, which we do plan to do, it kind of softens the flesh a little bit. So uh, the red will be a, a lot more apparent. So if you do want the flesh color to be more noticeable, you might... Uh, just go over it with a with a couple of extra layers, just for safety, kind of like what I'm doing right here. But you can just do it to any extent that you wish. It's whatever you want to do. This is your miniature that you're painting. I am only giving you ideas along the way. That's it. You get to do whatever you want because you get to paint your miniatures however you want. And that's what we like to see around here. That's what we want to do. We like to do the paint jobs. We like to do them. And I am happy to give you some ideas along the way and some inspiration but you ultimately get to make your calls about what you do with your miniatures, and that's just fantastic. All right, a little bit something like that, and that's nice and pronounced. That's nice and gross looking. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse off that brush completely. All right, and then I figured to do some weird stuff, what we'll do is we'll actually take out some desert yellow, and this will give it sort of a, a greenish color almost, like a greenish yellow, gross decaying color. And I think that that will be an interesting sort of contrast to everything else that we did. So we'll just take the same dry brush after we've rinsed it off, and we'll just do the exact same method right here, and we're just going to paint across all of the rest of the miniature, basically. And then that'll be it. And then we're going to do some stuff with the, uh, the eyes and maybe the teeth a little bit. Uh, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, and then we'll just go over everything else. And I think this will give it a nice sort of the gooey bulbous sort of look and you'll sort of blend this into the flesh color as well and that'll really make it pop make sure you can see all of the really prominent sort of you know chest folds almost make sure to go again like uh, perpendicular to all of those fold lines, all of those folds right there, like this. Don't go across them like that, go up and down like that. And we'll go across the whole face like so as well. If I can get my camera to focus, that'd be nice. All right, and then, yeah, like I was saying earlier, what you can do too is you can just sort of blend into all of the flesh color, all the bar all of the barbarian flesh, and because you've already got a layer of that underneath it, and now you're doing a dry brushing layer of this over that, it should blend pretty naturally. As you can see there, it's sort of just, you know, you can see that there's a clear difference between this side, which has that more like green sort of rotting radioactive look, but then as it rotates, it kind of blends into the flesh color a little bit more naturally, and that's what we're looking for. Definitely don't be afraid to do multiple layers like this. As you can see, I've already got him pretty well covered, but whenever I do the varnish later on, I want everything to be nice and smooth. And like I said, it's going to soften the flesh color quite a bit, including this you know, desert yellow or this green color that's good, that I've got on here too. That's going to be softened up quite a bit. So don't be afraid to do multiple layers like I'm doing right here. As you can see, like this, uh, the interior of this hand right here, I've only got like one layer on that as opposed to everything else, which is nice and green and defined. The interior of the hand isn't quite as defined. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid to do multiple layers. All right, and I like that. That's got a nice sort of defined look of that weird sort of yellowish greenish color going all around the mutation, whereas the original sort of human form is still slightly more tan. 
I like that. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. All right. So after we've got the basically all of the flesh tones all there, everything that we want to have look the way that it looks, what we're going to do too is we're going to move on to the eyes, the big old nasty eye that's uh, on the side here, as well as, you know, the eyes right there. And then uh, maybe we could, you know, I bet we can even get away with using the same color for the teeth. What I'm going to take out actually is skeleton bone. It's basically uh, like a, a really, really pale green color. And I think that that will make a pretty interesting color for some nasty teeth and some eyes and all that kind of stuff. I don't even care what brush you use. You can use really just any old brush at all for the eyeball. So I'll just use some big, big old fat no-name brush right here. It doesn't matter. Just whatever you're most comfortable with. And I'm just going to go over the entirety of the eye on the side here. It might be a little bit tricky to sort of like guess by looking at the mold where the eyeball start, uh, stops and the flesh begins, but just sort of do your best and don't worry too much about it and you'll be okay. All right, a little bit something like that for the big bulbous eye on the side there. I'm gonna rinse that brush off and we're gonna use a really small brush actually for the teeth and the eyes. So what I'll do is I'll just take out a little tiny itty bitty detail brush right here and yeah, make sure that the point on it is nice and sharp like so, you want it to be you know, nice and sharp. And I would say that what uh, I'm gonna do right here is honestly just kind of optional. I, I think that if you're not really comfortable with doing it, don't worry about it. But if you're a little adventurous like me, then just go for it. So just get just a little itty bitty, teeny tiny drop onto the tip of your brush, and then just really lightly go over each eye and each tooth. I would start with the eyes. I think that they'll be a little bit easier since they're these sort of slits almost. All right, like so, and that just brings out the eyes just a little tiny bit. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the teeth here too. Again, this is all, I would say, strictly kind of an extra credit sort of thing. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of doing it. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's like to do it if you decide you wanna try it yourself. And if you don't wanna do it, that's totally fine too. Just a little tiny, little tiny dot on the tip of your brush. That's all that you need. You don't need very much at all. All right, just a little bit something like that. That looks great. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that brush off now. Oh, and another thing that I'm gonna do too with this same color, and I will use, eh, let's let's go, let's use the uh, like, you know, a smaller kind of brush. So we'll use like a, of those D&D &D brushes that we bought at the very beginning of this series. We'll use this base coat brush right here. And what we'll do is we'll coat actually each little claw on this big old hand right here, and that'll just bring out those claws a little bit more and make them kind of stand out and look nice and menacing and gnarly. You don't need to do anything too too crazy, just sort of paint the tip of each claw like so. Just make sure to get at it from all sides. Alright, a little something like that. That's all you need to do, nothing too major, just enough to make the claws nice and apparent. Make them stand out a little bit. And that'll be just fine. And next up, why don't we go ahead and just uh, touch up the details on that eye, and then after that, we're gonna do our uh, we're gonna do a quick shape just to add a little bit of shade, and then we'll add uh, our varnish, and then we're gonna be done. So what I'll do, I think I'll take out some pure red. I'll just take out a nice bright red color. All right, now just be very careful here. So what we'll do is we'll we'll use the detail brush again, and what I want to do is I want to go over each of those little each of those veins, each of those sort of uh, uh, blood vessels on the eye. You can uh, also thin down your paint a little bit by just taking the tip of your brush and dipping it into your water like that. And that will just thin down the paint and make it a little bit easier to use, I think. This is another thing too though, where um, if, you're, if you're not comfortable with doing this level of detail on the blood vessels, you can probably just go over the whole mini with the quick shade after this, and the quick shade will bring out those blood vessels. The uh, the coloration might seem a little bit strange, but I don't think it's going to be very distracting at all. I'm just sort of doing this for for the sake of doing some some extra extra work here. All right, and what we'll do too is we'll just go over the the whole pupil as well. 
And shoot, while we're doing, you know, big bright eyes uh, on there too, why don't we do some extra extra credit, and why don't we get some uh, some red onto the actual eyes themselves too? Now again, if you're not comfortable with doing this, don't worry about it. But I, why don't we why don't we try to be brave for a minute? This is the last miniature of uh, of the series actually, so yeah, why don't we go out with a little bit of a bang? So let's try just a little bit of extra detail. And let's just get a little bit of paint onto the tip of our brush, and we'll just paint some pupils right in the middle. So that he's staring you down. Just like that. There we go. Now he's looking right at you. I like that. Alright, why, why don't we go ahead and get that tongue too. Let's, let's brighten up that tongue. Make it nice and red and gross. There we go, now it just looks like he's got a tongue or some guts hanging out of his mouth, just like that. That looks pretty cool. All right, and I don't really want to do a whole lot else with it. I think that this is a pretty straightforward miniature and we don't need to mess it up too much. Why don't we go over uh, the whole thing though with a little bit of a shade, a little bit of a wash. We'll do a, we'll do a softer one. We're not gonna do the soft tone, but we and we don't want strong tone either. Why don't we just use the flesh wash? I mean, it makes sense because this whole thing is supposed to be a big, gnarly, fleshy mess. And then after we get that flesh wash on there, I'm gonna go over everything with a matte varnish as well, and that will just sort of smooth out all the colors, soften the flesh colors a little bit, and bring it all together. It's not very exciting to watch, so I won't bother you too much with it, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you've seen all the previous videos on here, then you know how this stuff works, and you know uh, what it's gonna do, and, and all that. And yeah, there you go, you're just gonna get a little bit of extra shade onto the miniature and that'll just kind of help to complete everything and then you're gonna do the matte varnish and then you're gonna then then that'll be it and there you go everybody that's the g mutant from the resident evil 2 board game and with that we have completed the base board game i'm not sure if i'll move on to any of the monster packs or not i kind of want to uh, but I also would have to uh, purchase them if that's something that I end up doing, and uh, I'm not sure if that's something that I'm really ready to commit to just yet financially, but we'll, we'll see how things go in the future. I do have other things that I want to paint relative to board games and miniatures and that kind of thing, so in any case, stay tuned to the channel, and... That'll be about it, so thank you again everybody for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw it a like, and if you want to see more videos like these in the future, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so much for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.